For measurement systems analysis, we often use a round robin or ring trial test. Let's dive in and see how you can use it to really test your measuring organization. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And today's video is about a round robin or ring trial way of getting samples. And this is especially used in measurement systems analysis, MSA, as a basis for the gauge R&R. So that's the reproducibility and repeatability. Now, how do you set it up and how are these two linked? Because a round robin test in principle is not only used for Six Sigma, but it is a very good tool to have in your toolbox. Let's rehash a little bit the gauge R&R. So this repeatability, reproducibility study. And what we often do is, especially when you do one gauge R&R, uh, you would actually like to know how this one measurement device holds up when several operators use it several times on uh, a number of different, but for each operator, the same products. So what you then do is you have a whole bunch of samples, in this case, D6, and you have three operators, each tested three times. These numbers can vary a bit. This is quite a standard number. What you then do is for each of these samples, the operators get them in different orders and even between the trials, preferably in different orders, but you know. So you put them back in order and for all the sample number ones, you calculate the average and the range that is the highest minus the lowest. And by the way, you also do the same per operator. And then you calculate from that the average average uh, value. So basically the average of all these samples, but also the average range that you get when you check these ranges for each of the samples. Now you can also analyze this using an ANOVA test and you get well, maybe slightly more accurate results, but it's a bit of a discussion. In practice, they give you the same info. Is this measurement system good in comparison to the range that we are testing it on in practice? Now, where does this round robin thing come in when we do gauge r and In fact, it's only about the operators. See, a ring trial or a round robin basically means that instead of three operators using the same device, you are probably using three different laboratories. And these three laboratories all get the same sample and they send it to each of the laboratories to be tested. So you get your six samples, everybody tries it three times with different codes, and then afterwards you do exactly the same mathematics that you would do with a usual gauge r &R. So either the ANOVA or this medium and range type of way to guess the standard deviation and what percentage of repeatability and what percentage of reproducibility you have. So this round robin and gauge r &R both do not assume that one of the operators is correct. In fact, what you do is you take the average for each sample and you consider the average to be the truth. And then each of the laboratories or operators is judged compared to the average of all of them. And what you also get in a very traditional type of ring trial is that one of these laboratories, for instance, this time, laboratory A makes all the samples they do the coding, they do everything, they also test it, but of course they know a little bit more because they know all the numbers, um, and they send it to the other laboratories. But then in three months, half a year, when you again do a ring trial, the same laboratories usually also participate in this, and then laboratory B makes the samples and sends it to the others, and then laboratory C makes the samples. So in this way, when you do a number of ring trials, none of these laboratories will be always advantaged. So it's a cooperative way of testing your measurement systems. And that's very similar to what you do with a gauge r, &R. Now there is one difference because there's also a second type of round robin or ring trial where you take a reference laboratory. And then basically what you do is that one of the laboratories is considered to be the golden standard and they take the place of the averages, these are the correct answers, and you check each laboratory, how far are they off this standard certified laboratory. This can, by the way, also be done for a gauge r &R. the same mathematics apply, but usually you do not have the golden standard in your factory, so 
That's why you do this type of comparison between the operators. And this is exactly also the reason why many laboratories do this. Because it's very hard to say that one a certified, accredited laboratory is the golden standard. When you have a number of laboratories that are all equally good, equally well certified, then what they do is they average their results to make sure that they are closest to the truth. So even if your usual government reference laboratory is maybe a bit off this month, the rest will even it out and make sure that as a total measurement system, you're as close to the truth as possible. If you want to do a round robin analysis within your organization to check if all the laboratories of different factories, for instance, get the same type of results and see how good your internal measurement system is, then what you do is you have one of the factories prepare enough samples. So in this example with three factory laboratories that all test three times, they need to prepare and code nine sample ones, nine sample twos. So they need to make the full package at their factory and really do all the coding of each of the retrials as well. Then well, they make their own check. They do not send the results. They do send all the other samples out to your other laboratories and they all do the analysis and they send the analysis preferably at the same time after everyone has finished back to this first laboratory or the coordinator of the round robin and then this factory will make the whole graph, uh, check everything, do the ANOVA testing or the mean and, uh, and range as you want and they then send out the results. And then the next time when you analyze the same measurement system, you make sure that one of the other factory laboratories does all the work of making the samples. This, of course, distributes the work, which is nice, but more important, it also distributes who is responsible for setting it all up. So you also know for sure that it's not, for instance, the headquarters laboratory that always has sort of an edge because they know the system and they know what type of pr product. And this creates a lot more trust with the other laboratories because that is the main reason that you make this ring trial, making the trust between the laboratories. Everyone will be in the place that they get unknown samples without any reference and they need to do the analysis, send the results. This is like an exam for laboratories. So that's the round robin test, a way to analyze your measurement system between different laboratories, between different organizations. You can do this within your own organization. This is also very often done outside of organizations. So with different, completely separate organizational laboratories, for instance. I hope you liked this explanation. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Also, if you would like me to explain other measurement system analysis tools or more of the statistics behind this, please don't forget to drop me a comment. I would love to explain more. Just tell me what you would like to know. For now, I wish you the best of luck in your measurement systems analysis, but as always, also enjoy the journey.